Hello, I was asked to look at chapter three of Fratelli Tutti, the uh, latest papal encyclical, and uh, this chapter is called uh, Envisaging and Engendering an Open World. The notable thing about encyclicals is they've been written in very profound messages and great language for centuries um, and were addressed to all the faithful, but uh, in fact, very few of anybody read them. Uh, there's a notable difference with Pope Francis. The three he's produced have been produced in a language that is very fresh and very accessible by comparison to their forebears. And um, there's still a way to go. Um, I think of the Sun newspaper of the 70s, 80s, 90s, which sold over 5 million copies and did so, it's, we may not like it, but it did so because it communicated using a very small vocabulary base with most people and that made people feel more confident to read it and the challenge for the church is if you want to communicate then you have to communicate with people in a way that, that they can understand and engage with you as Jesus did. Um, this uh, encyclical, the first paragraph in chapter 3, um, talks about communication and highlights the fact that you can only communicate if you're communicating with someone and ideally if they are responding to you. So this whole thing is about a relationship between um, human beings. The essence of the chapter, for, in my view, is uh, the a great commandment to love God above all things, uh, to love uh, your neighbour then as you love yourself. And uh, easier said than done, really, I would say. Pope Francis talks about the intrinsic value of every single human being, uh, whatever their age, which might be before birth in our case, uh, right to the end of their life and whatever their condition or situation, whatever their race, whatever their religion, um, every single person has a value. And the uh, Pope emphasises in this um, chapter that um, we can't, it's an irreducible position that you can't step back from it, you can't step away from it. Um, uh, a person's intrinsic value is no less whatever happens. And it challenges us that um, the Pope talks about that we don't serve ideologies, we serve people and everything we do should serve people. And that should be all of our systems too. So when we see child refugees dying in the sea, every one of them we should grieve over because they had that intrinsic individual value that is irreducible. Um, so we're challenged. We're challenged very hard by, um, by what the Pope tells us. Um, uh, so that by everything we do, our political systems, our financial systems, the way we spend our own money, the way we decide that somebody is less than somebody else, because of whatever reason, stops us loving our neighbour, reduces our love of ourselves and causes us not to love God. So we cannot forego the value of the individual and whenever we do, it is probable that we fall short in this great commandment. In the paragraph, the words used, um, envisaging and engendering an open world. The closed world that we live in is the one where um, our individualism and our me-ness is the priority. Um, engendering is making and envisaging is seeing. So seeing and making an open world is to always make decisions for the people, by the people ideally, and to tolerate no systems which make judgments that reduce or denude that intrinsic value of every human being. The most important thing I'd say about any um, uh, encyclical is that they're written in nice paragraphs. I think this one, this char chapter runs from paragraph 87 to 127. You can read a paragraph and wonder about it. 
And it is in that engagement that the communication that the Pope would love to happen begins to happen. You may not understand, you may not want to read the whole thing, but please check in on it and read a little of it and see how it makes you feel. But God bless you and your efforts and uh, thank you for listening.